In my previous video on integration, I showed you from scratch what integration is and how it gives the area under the curve. You gave so much love to that video and asked for more integration problems. So here I am back with another video where we will go through different methods of integration, like basic integration, substitution method, integration by parts, partial fractions, trigonometric substitution, and even some tricky problems to challenge your understanding. But we will divide it into two or three separate videos so that you don't feel overwhelmed. Now, grab your pen and paper, and let's dive right in. First, we will start with basics, where we don't need to do any manipulation or tricks to solve integration. Just remember the standard formulas, and we are good to go. Before we start, the first thing to note is that we can take any value which is not dependent on x or whatever is after this d, like x here outside of this integral, and we usually don't have to think about that value while solving the problem. So for example, if we have an integral of p times e raised to qx and this dx, so we can take this p outside, but not e raised to qx, as this p is considered as a constant, which is independent of x. But suppose if we make this integral dependent on p, like this becomes dp. Then we can simply take e to the qx outside of this integral, because now this term acts as a constant, which is not dependent on p, but we cannot take this p outside. Simple enough, right? Let us proceed. So this is our first question. We will apply this power rule to solve it. So first take this 3 outside and solve for this remaining part. Integral of x squared equals x to the second power plus 1 over 2 plus 1, or x cubed over 3. Now multiply this 3 with it to make it as x cubed. By the way, in this video, we will be focusing on indefinite integrals only. Suppose we want to calculate the integral of a function f of x and dx. So indefinite integrals are nothing but just a function, say g of x, that represents a family of functions whose derivatives are this f of x. In short, it's the reverse of taking a derivative. So in this case, we got the integral of 3x squared as x cubed. So a family of functions means we simply add a constant c to this after doing all the math, because now, if we take the derivative of this x cubed plus c, we get 3 times x squared, right? Because the derivative of a constant term is 0. So, using an indefinite integral, we get a family of functions. Therefore, the answer can be x cubed plus 1, or x cubed plus 7, or maybe x cubed plus 100. I think you got the point. Okay, moving on to our next question. Solve this integral. Take 7 outside, and now solve for this. Wait, we don't have anything here? Look properly. We have a 1 here, which can also be written as x raised to the 0 power. So again, using that formula, we get x to the 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 1, or x to the 1, or simply x. Thus, the integral of 7 dx is 7x. Don't forget to add this constant c to it. Now solve for this, whenever we have additions inside the integral, which means adding two different functions. We can simply separate them out into two different integrals like this. So we will tackle them separately. First, consider this. Take 2 outside. Then this will become x to the negative 3 plus 1 over negative 3 plus 1, or x to the negative 2 over negative 2. Now, multiply it with this 2 to get minus x to the negative 2. For this part, take 4 outside, and integral of x squared will become x cubed over 3, or this will be 4x cubed over 3. So, the final answer will be 4x cubed over 3 minus x to the negative 2, and this plus c. Now solve for this. Step 1 is to break them into separate terms. Now consider this part. Take 3 outside, 
and then write this square root as x raised to 1 over 2. So, using this formula, we get x raised to half plus 1 over half plus 1, or x, to the 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2, or 2 over 3 times x, to the 3 over 2. And when multiplied with this 3, we get 2 times x to the 3 over 2. And for this part, we get minus 1 times integral of x to the minus half, or x to the minus half, plus 1 over minus half plus 1, or 2 times square root of x. So, the final answer is 2 times x to the third power over 2 minus 2 times the square root of x. Don't forget to add c to it. Great. Now let me know in the comments what will be the integral of this function. By the way, what do you think will be the integral of 1 over x? Can we use this formula here? If not, then what will be the value of this integral? Now, we will see how to solve integration problems using the substitution method. Suppose we want to find the integration of 2x plus 3 whole cube dx. So the first thing that comes to our mind is to use a plus b whole cube formula to expand this function and then separately solve for each integral, right? But instead of doing this boring thing, what if we use our tiny unused brain a bit to substitute 2x plus 3 as some variable u. So this will become u cubed times dx, right? But now we cannot throw this u out of this integral because it is dependent on x. So what can be done? Yes, we can change this dx. You might think, can we do that? So the answer is yes, we can do that. But how? For that, we have this u as 2x plus 3. Now differentiate this u with respect to x to get du by dx equals 2, isn't it? Its derivative will be 2. So we can rewrite this dx as du over 2 and substitute it here to get our integral as u cubed times du over 2. Take this half outside to get u cubed du here, and this is simple to solve. It will be 1 by 2 times u raised to 4 over 4 plus c, or u raised to 4 over 8 plus c. Now again, replace this u with this function of x to get the integral of this function as 2x plus 3 whole raised to 4 over 8 plus c. And that's it. See, it became so easy to solve it this way, instead of expanding and solving it the usual way. Now let us solve this question. After seeing this question, you might scratch your head wondering where to even begin. But don't worry, substitution will make it super simple. Let u equals x squared, so du over dx equals 2x. Thus, x times dx equals du over 2. So this x dx will become du, and e to the x square will become e to the u. Now this is super easy, right? Using the standard integral formula, we get this as e to the u over 2 plus c. Finally, let us substitute u here to get the final answer as e to the x square over 2 plus c, and that's it. By the way, if you are unsure of whether the answer is correct or not, you can just differentiate the answer, and if that is equal to the function inside the integral, then we are on the right track. Now let us involve some trigonometric functions. Solve for this integral. Again, don't scratch your head and please use substitution. Let u equals the sine of x. So du over dx equals cos x, right? Thus, du equals cos x times dx. And look here, this is what we need. So, this integral becomes u squared times du, whose integration is simply u cubed over 3, isn't it? Thus, our final answer will become sine of x, whole cube over 3. And don't forget to add this c. Adding this c is such a pain to remember. Next, we will solve this question. Let x cubed plus 1 equals u. So, we get du equals 3x squared times dx. Thus, we get integral of square root of u. 
times this x squared dx becomes du over 3. This is super simple. This will become 1 over 3 times 2 over 3 times u raised to 3 over 2. Substitute u as this to get 2 over 9 times x cubed plus 1 raised to 3 over 2 plus c, and that's it. So, as you might have noticed, we use the substitution method when a part of the integral looks like the derivative of another part, allowing you to simplify it into an easier form. Finally, we will solve this question and end this video. This is also a substitution, but it is trigonometric substitution. Now for this question, let us substitute x as 2 times sine of some variable theta. So, now differentiate it with respect to theta to get dx over d theta as 2 cos theta, right? So, dx equals 2 cos theta times d theta. Now this will become under root of 4 minus 4 sine square theta. Or, using this trigonometric identity, we get under root 4 cos square theta or 2 cos theta. So, the integral becomes 2 cos theta times 2 cos theta d theta or 2 cos square theta d theta, which is way easier to solve. We can then use this trigonometric formula for cos 2 theta to get this as this, or 2 plus 2 cos 2 theta. Now separate it like this. This will become 2 times theta. For this part, take 2 outside. Now you can use substitution method here to get integral of cos 2 theta as half of sine 2 theta. So, finally this becomes 2 theta plus sine of 2 theta. Now look here. We get x over 2 equals sine theta, and therefore theta equals sine inverse of x over 2. Substitute it here to get 2 times this plus sine of 2 times this and this plus c. That was simply amazing. Now you might think, how will I come to know which method to use for which question? Think of it like cooking a meal. When you first start cooking, you might need a recipe for everything. But over time, with practice, you instinctively know what to do, like boiling pasta instead of baking it and baking cake instead of boiling it. Similarly, with integration, the more problems you solve, the easier it becomes to recognize the right method without even thinking twice. Now if this video gets 5,000 likes, then I will make part two of it, where I will show you how to solve integral problems using integration by parts, partial fractions, more trigonometric substitution, and even some tricky problems. Also, if you enjoy my videos and want to support my channel, consider becoming a Patreon as it helps me create more awesome content for you. Link is in the pinned comment. So good!